In today's video, I'm testing out these, the Hollyland Mars 400S wireless transmission system. Now, Hollyland say that these will transmit an HDMI or an SDI signal up to 400 feet with ultra low latency. But what's the picture quality like? What's the latency like? Will it work with my ATEM Mini Pro? And ultimately, I'm gonna be asking the question, are these things worth buying? <laughs> Quick unboxing to start then, this is what you get inside. You've got the transmission unit here, the antennas, and you actually get five antennas in case you lose one, a box of goodies that we'll go through in a second, and the receiver unit as well. And if I just get both the receiver and the transmission unit out, in terms of visual looks, they are almost identical. You can see, I'll just hold it up to the camera from the front there. The real difference is the side, uh, although they've got the same ports, you have an SDI port, an HDMI port, and a USB-C port. Obviously, because one is in a transmitter and one is a receiver, one is HDMI and SDI in, one is HDMI and SDI out. On the other side, you just have power in and a, a power on-off switch. And then obviously, you can tell which one is the transmitter and which one is the receiver by the TX and the RX on the units themselves. And the final thing to mention, on the back are Sony NPF 970 battery slots. So you can power these by battery as well if you don't wanna plug them into the mains and you've got the antenna slots on the top. So yeah, overall very impressed with the look and feel of these devices. What else you get in the box apart from the devices and the antennas? You get an L-shaped bracket. So this is great if you're wanting to mount this to your camera because just to note the tripod thread on the device is on the bottom. So rather than mounting it vertically, this allows you to mount it horizontally. And one of the things to also note is it mounts it with the battery slate on the top. So it's easy to hot swap your batteries. Using that L-shaped mount, you get a USB-C to USB-A converter in the bag, a tripod screw, and then a hot shoe adapter as well, which I haven't taken out of the packet. The final thing you get in there is one Yes, one power adapter. And this aggravated me a little bit, I must admit, because when it first arrived, I was really looking forward to using it and firing it all up. And I couldn't because they only include one power adapter. And uh, I didn't have any of the Sony batteries, so I had to jump onto Amazon Prime. Luckily, with Prime, they come next day, so I ordered two of the Sony NPF 970 batteries. And they're really easy because all you do is just slot them on and turn on the power. And then the unit will boot up within a few seconds or so. There you go, you can see that there. So I'd highly recommend if you are gonna get these units also getting the Sony MPF uh, 970 batteries as well, because especially if you go for the big ones, they'll last a long time. Setting these things up is actually remarkably easy and it's kind of plug and play and then you can dive into the advanced settings if you wanna tweak your setup. You just screw the antennas on, give both units power, Plug your transmitter device into your camera and your receiver into your monitor or whichever device you want to send the signal to and bam, just like that, we've got picture and audio coming through crystal clear and this will work for signals of up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. And as an added bonus, which links quite nicely to a question we had in from Tom Cooper when I said I was gonna do this video and ask your questions, he asked, do they cross convert the HDMI to SDI signal or is it just SDI to SDI and HDMI to HDMI? Well, I've done a test, I'm actually doing it right now and I'm happy to say that they do cross convert. So that means you could use an HDMI or a camera that outputs HDMI and bring that into a vision mixer or production broadcast equipment that accepts SDI using the Hollyland Mars 400S and flip reverse it as well. You can use an SDI camera with HDMI equipment or, or even something like the ATEM Mini Pro. So you could bring high level SDI cameras into the ATEM Mini Pro wirelessly using these Mars 400S receivers. So actually my setup that I've got going right now, and you can see the picture coming through on my Blackmagic mini monitor here, uh, we have the feed coming in at 1080p 50, and it's outputting from the mon or to the monitor via HDMI. And actually what I'm doing here is I'm taking the feed from my ATEM Mini Pro into my Blackmagic Video Assist monitor here, which has HDMI and SDI. I've just come out of the SDI port on the monitor 
to the transmitter unit to HDMI from the receiver to the monitor. And that seems to be working fine. It's also worth mentioning that one of these transmitter units is actually able to send the signal to two receiver units at the same time, which is really useful if you're in a position where you need to have multiple people monitoring the shots. And I wanna talk about monitoring because that's where I believe the Mars 400S really does excel. Not only can you send the signal from one transmitter to two receivers, but you can also send it to one transmitter and up to four iOS or Android devices for monitoring too. So let me show you how that works. I've got my Blackmagic camera plugged into the transmitter unit here on one side of the room. And then over on the other side of the room, I've got the receiver unit plugged into a Blackmagic monitor. And it's worth noting both of those are battery powered as well. But let me show you how to connect to it via an iPad first. So go to the App Store, search for Hollyview, H-O-L-L-Y, V-I-E-W and download the app that looks like this. Once it's downloaded, open it up and then it will show you all the devices that you can connect to. Now I personally at this point came out of the app and went into my settings and went over to Wi-Fi and connected to the Hollyview's Wi-Fi because it puts out its own network. Uh, the default password by the way is 12345678. Once you connect to it, then I go back to the Hollyview app and you might need to restart it but you should see an orange connect button next to your device. Hit that and then within a few seconds, you'll get a live view from your camera or from your receiver. And it works on iPhone as well. As I say, up to four devices can be connected at once. And when I stopped this footage in the timeline, they were all in sync perfectly. So that's impressive. The Hollyview app gives you a ton of features. You've got waveforms here, histograms, focus assist. And if you hold one of these, any one of these, you can actually drill down into the menu and uh, change some of the settings. So in, in this case, it's transparency. Turn on the zebras. And again, if you hold down, you could adjust the threshold here. Um, so you can really get into the granular settings of these additional views. We've got frames. You can have different um, frame safe uh, viewing options, magnifying glass to check focus and check things in the shot. Uh, what else is on here as well? And you can move that around the screen, false color and some more color options as well. The one I like is LUTs. You can even load your own LUTs into here to see what the shot would look like graded um, on the monitor. That is really powerful. It's worth noting as well that each device acts independently. So you can have different data and graphs shown on each one. So you could give one iPad, for example, to a director and have all the information that they need and then another device to a client. So that in this case, using the magnifying glass to check what's in the background. So there's a lot of flexibility there. One other thing I want to mention that actually links into this question is even when you're moving around, the connection is solid. I went all over my house um, trying to get some breakup, but the connection went through walls and was just stable throughout. As a wireless monitoring kit, then I really can't fault the Hollyland Mars 400S. They do everything very well and also very robustly. When I was walking around my house trying to get the signal to drop, it absolutely didn't. The signal strength stayed full the whole time. Um, but just to have those features like being able to connect up to four iOS devices or Android devices and each one having scopes and being able to apply 3D LUTs and having the magnifying glass, I just think that's fantastic. So um, I don't like giving things stars like five out of five, but if I had to, I can't really fault it. It was easy to use and did everything it said, so I'd probably have to give it the five stars. But let me move on to my next section of this video, which is answering a lot of questions that you guys have sent in about, okay, that's monitoring, but what happens if you want to use these things in a live production environment? Um, can you hook them up and use them to have wireless cameras feeding into your vision mixer, for example? Do they even work with the A10 Mini Pro? I want to talk about that and do some demos around that. So first thing I just want to say is that these Mars 400 units are meant for monitoring. They're not necessarily meant for what I'm about to show you and using them in a live production. So keep that in mind. That being said, they do work really well in this environment. So let me just show you what I've got here. I've got my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K hooked up to the Mars 400 transmitter unit. And then I have plugged in from the HDMI out of the receiver unit into port number three or HDMI port number three on my A10 Mini Pro. And uh, then the output is going to my monitor, which is where I do my recording. And what that essentially has given me is a completely wireless camera that I can feed into my A10 Mini Pro. So if I just pick up the camera here, and you can see everything's battery powered, no, it's not plugged into power, the transmitter's battery powered, the camera is also running on battery. And if I cut to it here, there we go. 
can see a bit of my setup that we've got going on down here. Can spin it onto me. Wave. Cut back here. So now we have a completely wireless camera rig. This is great for stuff like sport and you know, you could, there's nothing stopping you getting multiple of these Mars, Mars 400 units and running them into the A10 Mini Pro and having all of your cameras wireless. I mean, that's gotta be the ultimate setup. There are a couple of things to just think about and have in mind if you are doing this, especially if you're gonna mix wired cameras with the wireless uh, Mars 400 because it isn't a zero latency unit. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But this certainly does answer, I think it was Procopy Australia's question from earlier, asking about having a roaming camera and whether the picture quality would be good enough and things like that. And absolutely it is. There's no breakups here, even when you're moving fast. Um, it works really well. And it's worth noting as well that these transmitters send audio too. So we're going to talk a bit about latency and audio delays and things like that in just a second. But with certainly with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, it's got ample audio options. You can take the onboard camera audio, you can take external audio through mini XLR or even a quarter inch jack. So in this case, I've got the camera uh, microphones. And if I just turn, if I turn this mic off for a second, the camera mic on now, you should be able to hear me through the onboard mic Oh God, that's a horrible view, but you should be able to hear me through the onboard, onboard mic of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And as I move around, uh, yeah, those signals aren't being disrupted at all. One thing to note is that you will not get the um, tally sources back. So if I just bring on the picture in picture here, you can see that there, we don't get the tally light. So you don't get any of that control information or anything like that, but you can see there we go, this, this would have been an easier view to show you. It really does work great for that, can't fault it. Now, I wanna talk about a couple of little caveats. Firstly, as I mentioned before, these aren't zero latency transmission units. Hollyland actually do produce zero latency transmission units for professional broadcasters. There's a range of them on their website if you do wanna check it out. Obviously, they're quite pricey, um, but they will be perfect for live production. I decided to run a comparison test between a direct HDMI connection from my camera versus running it through the Mars 400S's to roughly work out what the latency is. So I'm gonna move the timeline here till I get the clap in the direct HDMI and then count the number of frames between that clap and seeing it in the Mars 400. And that's about four frames of difference. Now I shot this at 1080p, so you do a thousand milliseconds divided by 50 frames will give you 20 times that by four, and that is about 80 milliseconds of transmission delay that the Mars 400S is introduced. So you can see it's not a massive delay there, and I can think of a few situations where you'd be absolutely fine using the Mars 400S in a live environment. Number one, where all of your inputs are running through Hollyland Mars 400S's, because then the latency is gonna be the same. So if you've got camera one, two, three, and four, all connected wirelessly, each using these units, then the latency is gonna be about 80 milliseconds or so for all of the inputs, and so you're not gonna have any video sync issues. And then all you do for the audio, if you're bringing the audio in separately, that is, you just sync up your audio like you would do normally if the cameras were wired. And secondly, when you don't need your wireless camera to capture the same content that your wired cameras are. And what I mean by this, to give you an example, I'm thinking colleges, schools, sporting events, for example. Uh, you would set up maybe like a small studio with three wired cameras into your vision mixer and then you want a wireless camera down on the touchline to give player interviews or even capture some of the game content. That's fine because you're not going to have any video sync issues between the cameras in the studio capturing the same content as the wireless camera, which is where you might then run into issues with, with the video sync. Because they're capturing two different things, you can throw to them just fine between the two areas and uh, you won't notice any difference. So yeah, where you might struggle and, and find an issue with this is if your wireless camera is pointing and, and trying to uh, like show the same thing that your wired cameras are, because then that's when the 80 or so millisecond difference is gonna come into play and it might just be noticeable. That said, one thing that you can look to do to reduce latency is if you go into the menu on the transmitter device by holding the menu button in the middle, there's three modes if you go into C mode. You've got image mode, balance mode, and speed mode. 
Image mode is going to prioritize the image quality and it might give you additional latency or delay because it's trying to send the best quality signal. But if you go down to, got it there, speed mode, that is gonna preference latency or the lowest latency possible, still delivering a good image. If you want somewhere in between, choose balance mode. So that's one tip that you can use to try and reduce the latency further when using these in a live environment. Now I wanna answer another question that came in, this one from Easy Yoke Films, it says, please test for how compressed the images they produce are. Compare the images to an image that comes straight from the HDMI port on the camera. Great idea, let's do it. What I've done is split the HDMI output from my camera and one of those outputs is going directly to the A10 Mini Pro, the other is going through the Mars 400 S's. So I've got it on uh, input number two and three on my A10 Mini Pro. What you're seeing right now is directly from the camera and if I switch over, this is now going through the Mars 400 S's and I'll switch back and over again. So this is 400 S direct 400 S direct. And I can see it ever such, such a slight color change, but I'm previewing it on a small monitor. So I can't really see if there's any major compression issues. I'll take a look at it in the timeline and jump back on if I see anything huge, but let me know what you think of the difference down below in the comments. So I've just gone in and viewed the files. I did notice a little bit of compression, just a little bit of softness when I when I zoomed in on, on the images. But to be honest, these are, as I say, meant for monitoring where that's not gonna matter too much at all. Um, but it still wouldn't, even with the little bit of loss, it still wouldn't actually stop me from using them in a live environment either. So I just wanted to come back on and let you guys know what I saw in the results. Okay, time to round this up and give you my review. Ah, before I do that, I want to get one more question in. This one is from Russell. He says, if you have two pairs, do you run into interference? How well does changing channels help with interference? Very good question. Um, firstly, I don't have two pairs, so I haven't been able to test that myself, but I've been speaking to other people who said that they've run two or three pairs and had no issues whatsoever. So I don't imagine that you would have an issue doing this or running multiple pairs. One thing I did just want to mention though, if I fire up my uh, receiver unit here, there's a really neat feature within the Hollyland receiver that allows you to channel scan. So check all of the channels and it shows you which channels are congested and are best to stay away from and which ones it would advise you doing. So I'll fire up my transmitter unit here as well. But on the receiver, again, hold the middle button to go into the menu. Got to hold it down for a few seconds. Then you can see channel scan, hit channel scan, and it takes about 10, 15 seconds or so. And what you'll get once it's finished is ticks and crosses next to each channel and the crosses are advised to stay away. There we go, you can see some there. So it's suggesting where I am right now, stay away from channel one and two, three is fine, four is congested, but five, six, seven and eight are all good. So I've mainly been using channel uh, five and eight recently in here. So that's really useful and as a habit, get into when you're in a new location, just doing that anyway. And then to change channel, just so you know, you can go back, click the return button, click on exit and then all you do is you just move these channel direction to the one you want so let's go on channel five because i saw that was free uh, actually i'm on channel five at the moment as shown here on the receiver but i want to show you something so if i change it just for now to channel six click ok and you'll see it automatically changes the receiver to to the same channel so you don't have to go and pair each receiver and transmitter change it on the receiver and it will automatically send a message to the transmitters say hey we, we switch stations now or channels now okay then let's round off with a review overall in all my personal testing they've been faultless and i love from the monitoring side of view all of the extra scopes and things like that i get when using an ipad and just having the ability to pull out the device that i have in my pocket with me all the time and use that as a monitor is great so i think i said earlier but five out of five for the monitoring side of things. And then as an additional bonus, I can see ways that I would use these in live production as well. Even just like I did before, having a wireless camera to show you parts of, of my studio and the setup, I found incredibly useful. Um, so yeah, overall, as I said, I don't like giving things scores. So what I'm just gonna say is these things, I think they're going in America for around 600, $650 at the moment. In the UK, it's slightly less at around 350 pounds. For that, in my opinion, this is something that I 
wouldn't bat an eyelid twice at having in my camera bag as part of my live streaming setup and for that sort of price it's a no-brainer so can't but recommend them and i'm looking forward to the using them more in the future if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more lots of stuff coming up in the next few weeks also if you have found this video useful it really helps please do give it a like on uh, YouTube and any questions that you have whether it be about the Mars 400s using it in live production using it for monitoring any questions put them down in the comments below thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one